Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malzberg. Maybe when we go into war, we should be thinking about its consequences and its ramifications. You would think that would be a given, but maybe it wasn't. And so we go into a war in Iraq, go into Afghanistan, leave Afghanistan for Iraq with unfinished business in Afghanistan. Ten years later, we have all of these additional veterans. In the past five years, two million more veterans. All right, folks, Nancy Pelosi basically blaming uh, the VA problems on George W. Bush and getting us into two wars. And joining us now, joining Francesca Page and I, David Drucker, senior congressional correspondent for The Washington Examiner. Hey, David. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Her, her blaming, and your paper uh, came out with this story and provided the video link as well, um, came out, uh, she, she came out and said, uh, you know, without saying George W. Bush, that it was the two wars' fault, it was George W. Bush's fault, uh, and then she talks about the millions of people now in the system, and that's the problem. Well, <laughs> what is it, what, what's Obamacare going to have to deal with? Well, it's, it's a good tactical response, I think, by uh, Ms. Pelosi, because the, the war in, Af in Iraq you know, has never been popular, was never popular. Afghanistan grew unpopular over time, even though it originally was the good war and the war everybody supported. And so if you're a Democrat, you're trying to explain the president's issues here on the VA and the, the, the sort of growing scandal there. What you want to do is try and tie it to George W. Bush and his unpopular military policy, and hopefully it, you at least muddy the water. So politically, I completely understand what she's doing. Uh, is it, is it going to work? Is it going to resonate at all? You know, it's possible, and we've seen over the past six years that uh, you know, there are a lot of things that might normally have really fallen at the feet of any president that this president um, has been able to deflect in one manner or another. His poll numbers have really never dropped below the low 40s. In other words, never into like an an, an unfixable danger zone. It's, it's, they've been super low 40s, mid 40s, sometimes high 40s. So he's, he hasn't done that great in a long time, but he's never been uh, beyond repair. And so it's possible that people will look at this and blame him, but but decide that it's not necessarily his fault. It's not th that much di different uh, than how they've looked at the sluggish economic recovery, which is they're not that happy with the president's policies per se, or maybe his leadership in terms of recovery, but the problem that was created, the, the economic crash, wasn't his fault, and he's done the best he could under difficult circumstances to fix it. Don't forget, you know, how effective that Bill Clinton line was at the Democratic Convention a couple of years ago. Nobody could have fixed this problem, the economy, in just four years, not even me. And, and I think that's a lot of Obama's resiliency, despite problems with Obamacare, despite periodic problems, whether it's the IRS or the big Gulf oil spill, where his leadership takes a, a real hit, but he, he never gets to the point uh, where he's a complete dead weight anchor once and for all. Right, 20, right. 20, 2010 he was, but he recovered enough to win re-election in 2012 and actually help his party gain two Senate seats. Back to Nancy, just to ask you, if she's so against yet another uh, committee in Benghazi, which is going to cost thousands and lots of documents to review. Why are her and the Democrats going along with this? Do they fear something that might come out, that they might have to eventually maybe even defend Hillary Clinton? Why do you think well, they're going along with this? It's, it's a great question, and I think that th there are two main reasons that, that she's going along with it. One is that the Republicans are going to pursue this uh, whether the Democrats are a part of it or not. And if the Democrats are not on the committee, they're not going to be able to see the information that is being reviewed and uncovered. They're not going to have a chance to question witnesses in depositions and on the committee. And th therefore, they know a lot less about what's going on and not be in a position to defend the administration and defend the president on this and to try and poke holes in the Republican narrative. And one will assume that the Democrats look at this as though that the Republicans will go in a direction that raises a lot of questions about Benghazi. The second uh, reason, in my view, and I think this kind of holds up if you look at the serious appointments that she made, and these are some serious, um, thoughtful uh, members of Congress with experience that she appointed, is on the off chance, from a Democratic point of view, that the Republicans actually found something. If the Democrats had not joined, politically it could be a big problem for them. And don't forget, you know, the. Obama will be out of office in, in about two years, two and a half years, uh, one way or the other. 
Democrats in Congress hope to stick around for a lot longer, and so they can't afford to completely ignore this and not be a part of it in case it turns out to be a, a some sort of big discovery that they make. Right. And, it's, and, it's, uh, it's too big a gamble for them correct. to take. Uh, David, we appreciate you coming on, sir. Thank you very, very much, David Drucker, senior congressional correspondent for the Washington Examiner. Uh, it was good to talk to him. Lots of, uh, lots of stuff to talk about these days. Um, all right, folks, uh, we'll be back with more of the uh, Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, but first, of course, today's America's Moment takes a look back at uh, General MacArthur's invasion of uh, Inchon. Stay tuned.